Hey guys, welcome to the Community Fitness Podcast. Uh, per usual, I'm, I'm a few minutes behind here, uh, but we're back for episode number 112, uh, 112, and uh, we asked, and this is what we received. Uh, so we are going over the top five reasons why your body isn't burning fat. Um, and I'm excited to do this episode because of two reasons. One, we haven't talked about fat loss in quite some time. I mean, I mean, a while, right? We usually talk about more of the holistic stuff, um, the more of the overall approach, because we want you to uh, make sure that you kind of take that into consideration when you're uh, considering your health and fitness. And we also want you to know that fitness isn't just about fat loss. Um, and fitness isn't just about burning yourself to the ground. There's so much more to it. Uh, however, the uh, mainstream media and um, the strong beliefs tied in with that, uh, as well as the promotion of fat loss and being basically the only thing that fitness can do for you uh, for the longest time, um, really didn't help us, uh, along with the simple fact that everybody wants to look better naked, and that obviously comes back to fat loss. So here we are. If you are here, if you're if you're following along live uh, on Facebook, comment, tell me that you're here, say hi, all those good things. Um, you know how much I like the interaction and uh, making sure that you all are watching and who I'm talking to. Uh, obviously, as we're going through this, if you have any questions, please let me know. But more importantly, just make sure that you tell me that you're here and, and say hey. Um, but as we're doing that, we're gearing up for the new year, 2021. We've got some major, major, major stuff happening at Unity Fitness. Um, big changes happening inside the gym, big changes happening outside the gym, big stuff coming your way. And again, as everything, uh, as always, as everything that we do here at Unity Fitness, it's always built around and designed around and the choices are made around making sure our member experience is even better than before. Uh, so we wanna help you get more results. We wanna make sure that you're getting to your uh, results faster, more efficient, uh, more effective. So. Without further ado, let's go over these. Let's go over these episode, or let's go over this episode in terms of uh, what we're what we're actually here to talk about. What you're actually here to listen to, and that is the top five reasons you aren't burning fat. Your body isn't burning fat, um, and there's there's a lot of reasons that are probably out there, but these are the top five that I have seen over the last nine years in the business. Um, I'm very excited to talk about this because basically, when I started personal training, it was a very uh, I was going to school for physical therapy and I got to shadow and I got to train um, with my original, my first mentor. And I realized really quick that everybody wanted to actually burn fat from it. And then I thought about like, well, duh, that's why I started getting into training uh, and, and, and workout routines, staying consistent with it. Because when I was a freshman in high school, I had gained almost 20 pounds, 25 pounds, more so from like the the the, the end of my senior year when sports were done to like that moment of like, halfway through first semester of my freshman year, I was like, whoa, like I uh, am 200 plus pounds. So uh, fitness kind of changed my life 2006, 2007, and been with it ever since. So when you're thinking about fat loss, the number one reason, and these aren't in necessarily any particular order, but I did want to start with this, but so the, the, the number one reason uh, why you're not burning fat is that you don't understand how fat loss works. And there, there's there's two complexities to this, right? There's two parts to it that um, we need to dive into. One is you just don't understand that, you, you think fat loss is linear. And, and by that I mean that you think it's a straight line, you start and then you lose the fat and then it's all good. And that's that's totally false. It's not even close to how fat loss works. It's a very moving line up and down, zigzag back and forth. Um, a lot of different uh, peaks and valleys, a lot of different side winding roads, all that, uh, all that through there. So you have to get that out of your head that it's going to be like this the whole way through. Uh, the second thing about that then is you don't understand how fat loss works because you don't understand that it's a hormonal thing. And fat loss then... Um, becomes something a little bit more complicated, if you will, uh, but we're also not hormone specialists, we're not endocrinologists, uh, nor are we neuroendocrinologists or anything of that sort, but we understand how, or at least at Unity Fitness, when I'm talking about a, a fitness professional, uh, we understand how hormones work. So there's hormones like insulin, 
uh, that come into play here. We're talking about uh, different regulations of like um, uh, lipolysis um, and, and fat mobilization. And there's different stuff that can control that as we go through, okay? So when you understand a little bit more how fat loss works and you kind of have a better expectation of what to expect of what you're gonna go through, it helps you understand that you're not just gonna lose one pound every single week for the rest of your life. But if you did start like that, guys, if you started on January 1 in 2021 and you said my goal is to lose one pound of fat a week, in 52 weeks, you're down 52 pounds, right? If you go through the whole year, you're down 52 pounds. That's pretty awesome when you think about it from a standpoint of breaking it down to a per week basis. Those that break it down and try to lose as much as they can in each week and as quick as possible, go down this big spiraling kind of staircase uh, basically that really messes a lot of things up including the hormones which could result in immediate fat loss but more so just weight loss like water goes down muscle gets burned off um, which we obviously don't want and then we go into this trap where then after we're done with that six weeks we didn't really learn anything our body didn't really really sustain anything we didn't really realize that it wasn't our finish line and all of a sudden all that weight and more comes back on uh, that's obviously not good so the the main point here is that you, you, you can understand fat loss works in a, in, a, in a way that you have to kind of um, re-regulate the body and, and it changes. So your first five pounds that you lost might be the same as the next five, as the next five, but eventually that'll change where the first 10 to 15 pounds that you saw success with what you were doing, you have to create new action and you have to try something else or add something else or take something else away to get to the next five pounds. The, the, the first 10 to 15 is different than the next 10 to 15 is different than the next 10 to 15. So what you're doing um, over the course of those periods might change from each period. And you're building off of what you've already done. So this is why a lot of times quick fixes aren't sustainable because it's not sustainable for you to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on supplements or shakes or certain things for you to get your results, okay? That's just not smart. Like we don't, minimal, 1% of the population has that amount of money to do that, okay? 1%, which is why some of these marketing companies, these mid-level marketing companies, these pyramid companies, do so well because then when somebody's below you, you get a significant discount off of your products and then you get free products from them and then you get products at different prices so that you can give and sell and do all that stuff and that's where it spirals out from like a supplement company, from an MLM. Um, from a fitness standpoint, you basically bury yourself to the ground for this quick fix and you don't really understand all of that went in between it, why you lost all that weight, and then that's obviously working out five, six, seven, 20 days a week, um, four times a day, you you all of a sudden realize like, whoa, whoa, wow, like yeah, I probably can't sustain that. No, nobody can, nobody should. And, and that's, not what fat, that's not how fat loss works. So how it works then is that you have to create a sustainable approach and you have to look into habits that get you to these next steps. Because the ultimate thing is if you burn all this off and you gain, it comes all back, what did you really do? You, you, didn't, you, you, you played a game, okay? You played a game and you, you accomplished maybe what you wanted to out of a short period of time, but it comes down to that your body didn't actually know how to sustain that uh, and you went back to potentially old habits, old actions because you didn't sustain that. You, 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 you treated it like a finish line when it's not. There's a, there's a, there's a journey here. So how fat loss really works then is the number one thing is we have to get in a caloric deficit. So if you burn this many calories per day, we have to consume or burn off below that, right? So, so, so and essentially, I've said that kind of backwards, um, if you know that your body is going through this per day by what you're eating and what you're doing, we want to kind of stay below that in terms of what we're consuming so that we stay in this deficit. That deficit will create a that, that energy deficit will create a process in the body that then helps you burn fat um, because now your body's looking for energy that it didn't get from your eating and then all of a sudden it's like hey I've got some I'm holding on to 20 pounds of energy right here let's maybe start messing around with this stuff 
keeping in mind that fat that's in your body that we can burn or store is the hardest thing for your body to actually burn off. And that's because one gram of fat is nine calories. So if you have a lot of grams of fat to burn, there's a lot of calories for energy wise that it takes to burn those off. Okay. Your body knows that from a, ter uh, from a, from a, a standpoint of uh, basically like deprivation or like a, like a survival, right? So if your body is going through a survival mode, if your body has to be aware or be alert for survival, um, your body's going to maintain and hold on to that fat because it knows that it's the thing that it needs for energy sources when we're through survival. Uh, why would the body want to get away, give away the hardest thing or the, the thing that it gets the most energy from um, on any given day when it knows that it could use that for when it absolutely positively needs it when, when the body's put in a position to, to survive, okay? Um, that could be a life-threatening survival piece, which is when you see like people then go, uh, you know, like on, on a, um, like in the hospital and they're, and they're dealing with massive injuries or uh, massive surgery or a life-threatening issue, uh, you, you see the, like a before and afters of them and it, they either turn into kind of like a, I mean, they're a totally different person, right? They, they, I mean, they turn into a totally different physical feature of them. The, the muscle's gone. Uh, and, and what happens there too is like the muscle is usually burned first because the body likes to burn that better than the, than, the, than the fat in the body. So it's easier for the body for one, basically one gram of carbohydrate is four calories. One gram of protein is four calories. So, um, sorry if you heard my neck crack there. Uh, so if, if, if your body's in this, in this mode where it's looking for energy sources to burn and you're not, you're not utilizing them through exercise and movement, um, your body will go with them. So it'll, it'll take muscle away first. Uh, this comes back to the point of why when we're trying to burn fat through an exercise program, why protein is so necessary because we wanna maintain the muscle. If we give the body enough fuel source energy source through protein, the body won't go after protein, won't go after muscle to burn off as energy. It'll find another energy source. And when you change the way you eat, you're not eating garbage, it'll then look for the energy source that's left, with, which is fat. And then the body will start to burn fat. It's a pretty simple process when you break it down like that, right? But that'll happen as well when we bring the calories down below what you actually need per day that creates the caloric deficit. It's, it, it's honestly that simple. And I'm gonna go into a point in this in just a moment, then we'll go to the next ones. But this is, this is number one might be the most important through these top five because you need to understand this and, and you don't, which is why you're struggling, which is why you're watching this right now, which is why you're listening to this right now. So when we go back to this point of the body then um, looking for a source to burn for energy, and it, and it stores fat, it's, it likes fat, your body likes it again because it wants it because it knows that it can use it for later. You have to create enough uh, proper um, steps and habits to make sure that the body stays in that position because the body will catch up. The body is designed, it's, it's the best quote unquote computer machine system that you can find out there. Everything else in the world is designed around the human body because it's, it's so fascinating how it works and how everything works the way it does, um, that that's how everything's designed from, right? So your body will, will catch up and do a process called homeostasis. It, it, the body's generated to do that. It's, it's, it's generated to find homeostasis so that it knows how to kind of find this new normal. Um, a nice new normal, uh, or sorry, a process from the nice new normal is fat loss. Could be muscle building, okay? Your body's change, your body's adaptation to try to find its new normal results sometimes in fat loss. So that's, that's ultimately what we want. Here's where, people, here's where people go wrong. When I talked earlier about this is where you want your calories to be and you want your have, and, you know, and this is where we wanna be for fat loss, they think, ooh, if I go way down here, right? So I'm going below the screen. If we're, if we're burning this many calories per day and we just wanna get a little bit lower for fat loss purposes, but they'll be like, nah, I can go lower. I can go lower, I can go lower. This is where everybody goes, don't you tell me you haven't done this. Everybody's done this. I as a coach has done that, have done this in the past myself, like once, and then I realized how stupid and miserable and terrible it was. And now you try to tell other people that, and they're like, no, but you told me cal cal calorie deficit. 
Here's what happens. You keep going lower, and what did I just talk about? I said that your body doesn't want to burn fat because it knows how much it likes it for energy because there's so much energy involved. Remember, nine calories per one gram of fat. Nine calories. That's a decent amount of energy. Think about when you're when you're on your bike, when you're on your treadmill, when you're going for a run and you're doing your calorie tracking. Like, mm, I burned 2,000 today. I did 17 hours of work. I burned 2,000 calories. Whatever it is, I did 10 minutes of work and I burned 102 calories. Remember how hard it is to burn 10 calories. Nine calories is a gram of fat. Okay, nine calories. So your body again remembers that and it knows that and it likes the fact that fat has a lot of that energy that it can hold on to in case we need survival. So when you drop way down, what happens to your body? It loses water, it'll kick that out first, it'll start burning a little bit of fat, it'll start wicking away muscle, and it'll drop you way down and all of a sudden you're you're kind of like this skinny fat state. You're kind of like this frail, weak, uh, uh, fidgety, agitated, uh, just overtrained, no energy state. You're, 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 you're surviving off of what I call the mommy syndrome, right? You'll do anything for your kids. Basically, I see this happen to ladies a lot. Guys do it a lot too. Um, but guys will, 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 uh, will, will be busy. They'll stay busy rather than like just get drained because they want to complete their tasks for the day and, and, and be superwoman. Um, like we see moms do. Um, your, your mind will tell you, no, just keep working, keep working, keep working, and you'll go through this cycle. But when you drop your calories way down like that, your body says, hey, we're, going, we're in survival. Why do we want to burn fat? We'll get rid of everything first, and then we won't burn fat because we're, we're way under what we're supposed to be, and that's not what we like. And then you're going to be deprived of energy. You're not going to sleep well. You're not going to respond well for fitness and exercise. You're going to lose your PR goals. Yeah, you might look good for a photo shoot for half a second. You might look good on Facebook for half a minute. But is that really worth everything that you just did or are doing to yourself? But here's the worst thing about it. You actually screw up your hormones. You screw up your gut health. You screw up your immune system. You screw up your, your mindset. You screw up your mental health. Like, just imagine, like, you doing that and not having enough nourishment for your body to survive and do amazing things that your body and your life and you as a human being are capable of, but you didn't do it because you're depriving yourself of all this nourishment and energy because you're so hell-bent and headstrong towards making sure that you can bury yourself and drive yourself to the bottom with minimal calories per day because you think that's the way that fat loss works to then go into this cycle of um, extreme frustration and depression and agitation and anger and then you just keep doing it like you keep going over and over and over or the easy way out is like this you know what isn't worth it this is dumb this is stupid I'm gonna rebound and I'm just gonna go back to the way I was because this is this isn't worth it this isn't my thing then you find yourself six months later back to where you were plus 10 pounds it's because you don't understand how fat loss works so the big thing then is you want to have those calories down just a little bit three to five hundred below what your normally inta normal intake of a daily energy expenditure uh, is at. Now here's the other thing. It's also not about calorie counting. You don't need to calorie count to lose fat either because there's different ways that we can do this. You can work out more and you can create this bigger gap in between where your calories are eating and what you're burning per day. You can create a bigger gap. But remember, too much and you don't get the same results over long-term periods of time. That bigger gap can work for a little bit of time. We all know that because we've all done it. That gap can work for a little bit of time. But after about six weeks, maybe eight, maybe, maybe 10 if you're really, really, really lucky and you have a lot of weight to lose, maybe 10, um, you'll see a, a, a fat loss change, right? But after 10 weeks at total tops and as if you have enough weight to lose to do this, you'll see that what happens um, is that your body will shut down and it'll start to revert. It'll start to store fat again. We see this all the time, especially in females, because their hormones seem to be more interacted with this first, right? Um, so we, we see that estrogen and different things come into play first with their hormone stuff. And, and during this whole process, your hormones are changing. And if you get this extreme deficit, again, they're going to potentially change for life. Like then you're going to go through thyroid stuff, adrenal stuff. It's not good, guys. This is not good. This is why we, we have a problem here in the industry. This is why we have a problem in the world because you guys are all after this quick fix and you don't want to take the long-term approach to get the long-lasting results of what you should be doing. 
But let's go back to my original point where I said, what hand was I doing on? I'm going this one. So let's say I work out more and I create a bigger gap. Here's the coolest thing about this. If you work out more, you eat a little bit more to make sure that, that gap is maintained. You nourish your body, guys. You nourish your body, not take it away. Don't create this gap. Eat a little bit more good food to maintain it. It's, it's a great problem to have. But here's the thing. Let's say you can't exercise a lot. Let's say you're not getting a lot of movement in the day. You have a desk job that you just simply can't stand up for, that I'm too busy to stay at work. I'm too busy to stay at my desk and do whatever I'm supposed to be doing because you're motivated, right? You have a job. You have a career. You have people looking out for you, people that you got to take care of so you can't move a lot. All of a sudden, your daily energy comes way down here. Okay? Look at where your food stayed. The same. All right? Here's what happens when you bring that way down. You have to bring the food down with it, okay? So if you do more, you eat more. If you do less, you eat less, okay? Uh, Jay Teta, a doctor, Dr. Jay Teta is kind of the coin, uh, who, who coined that? The, the do more, eat more, the, the DMEM, or the do less, eat less, the DLEL, okay? But it's, it's how the body responds, it's how the body works, and you can fluctuate that. Now you can change that per day. Hey, I worked out today. I got some extra steps in today. I can eat a little bit more, but I'll stay below. I'll stay below what my body actually needs so I can burn some fat too. Hey, today I didn't do a whole hell of a lot, so I probably shouldn't have as much food to eat. But I'm below. Here's the, here's the cool thing. You're below your normal intake, which is here, right? This is my normal. Do a little more that day. Do a little less that day. I can do a little less, and I can bring that food down with it, and I can still be below my normal, which means I can still burn fat when I didn't even work out that day, guys. Which brings me to my last point of you don't understand how fat loss works. Most of the fat, if not all of the fat, is burned off as an adaptation to what you did in the gym or what you're doing for nutrition. Which means most of the fat, majority of the fat that you're burning or that you want to burn happens outside of the gym. It happens outside of your long walks or long cardio bouts or your long exercise moments or whatever it is you're doing. It happens when you're doing other things so that your body doesn't have to look for fuel sources to do other things as you're doing other things. Particularly sleeping, which is a highly metabolic state of your body, and your body could easily burn, look at burning some fat while you're sleeping. And it's not about if you ate food late at night after 7 p.m. If I ate a peanut butter and jelly sandwich right before I worked out, that's 350 calories, and I ate that same 300 or peanut butter and jelly sandwich at 7.30 p.m., it's still 350 calories, guys. You're not going to blow up overnight because you ate something two hours before bed. Now, with that said, you don't want to eat right before bed. Snack maybe an hour before. You can have supper an hour and a half, two hours before, and you'll be just fine as long as you don't overeat. Okay? And, and overeating, uh, it's, again, it's not going to turn into anything else. What's going to happen is you're going to sleep like crap. That's what I'm more worried about. And if you're sleeping like crap, you're not recharging and restoring your body like you should be, which means you're not burning fat, okay? So fat loss is a metabolic process. Fat burning is a metabolic process called uh, lipolysis. So you go through lipolysis that creates fat mobilization, and you can do this in different ways with ketosis too. You've probably heard of that word, ketosis. Um, and you can create this fat mobilization in your body, and if you have fat, more fat mobilization in your body, your body's more uh, adapt to taking that fat that's in the mobilization process and using it as energy because it's easier there. It's coming around in the body. It's mobilized in the body. So why wouldn't the body want to use it then? Much, much, much easier. Okay. It starts from a hormonal standpoint, but we can control that with great exercise, great nutrition, and great sleep. You don't have to overdo one or the other because not all of us are Olympic athletes, nor all of us are bodybuilders or whatever else. We're all after that. We all want that. But we don't need to train like that. And if you look at those people, they aren't either every single day of the year. Very, very small bouts of that. Okay, So um, understand that most of your fat loss happens outside of the gym. And understand everything that I just said. Let's get to topic number two because topic number one took us 23 minutes to cover. Because it's huge. Because it's, 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 it's the truth though. right? It's the science behind fat loss. Um, number two, top reason number two why you aren't burning fat is that your nutrition is not consistent. Nutrition is an easy way to put us into a fat storing or a fat burning mode, right? Our body can only do one at a time. So if I create a meter, and that meter, if it goes to, I'll put it right in the middle of my face. If it goes this way to my left, that's fat burning. If it goes to my right, it's fat storing. 
okay? Your body can only do one at a time. That meter can only be somewhere, okay? Nutrition can take us in to fat burning and fat storing depending on the type of food that we eat and how fast we eat and what we're doing when we're eating, okay? So that can happen in all those things. So keep that in mind when we talk about nutrition. But the biggest thing when I say your nutrition is not consistent, and I'm gonna need some water here. Um, when I say your nutrition is not consistent, is that you're trying to do too many things. You're trying to follow too many diets. You're following the keto, intermittent fasting, uh, paleo, um, carnivore, low carb um, diet. I don't even know, right? You're following too many things and you're not consistent. And the other part about consistency is that you're not giving it enough time to do what it's supposed to do because you want immediate results because you're probably upset and you thought that what you were supposed to do was supposed to help you right now because I saw my friend do it and I saw my other person do it. I saw the other girl at my gym talk about it. Well, we're all different, so get over it and understand that it might not be good for you because at the end of the day, to be the most consistent at what you're supposed to do is, is, is essentially the thing that you have to figure out. So you have to figure out consistency because that's, the, I think, in my personal opinion, that's the one thing that holds people back the most is that they do not stay consistent long enough. Um, they can stay compliant and, 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 and go through that for so long, but they do not stay consistent, okay? There's too much stuff that happens or they get bored, right? If you got results, you wouldn't get bored. That's what I'm telling you right now either, by the way. If, if boring works extraordinarily well when it comes to like nutrition and exercise, okay? But if you're getting results, I promise you you're not bored, okay? You're bored because you're not getting results. So you wanna blame things, okay? Then you wanna change things and you wanna keep going through that cycle and changing things. So nutrition isn't consistent. You're not giving anything a chance to do it or you're all over the freaking place or you're not even following like a, a, a decent guide, a decent plan, right? Yeah, I think I get my protein in per day. And then we look at it and your protein's at 80 grams one day, 250 one day, or you're doing six, six, uh, six shakes a day to even get any protein in because, oh, I'm so busy and on the go, I don't really have time for myself, so I'm gonna do shakes all day. That, that's not gonna help, guys. That is not gonna help. You are not helping your nutrition. That is not how it's supposed to be. Supplements are supposed to supplement, not to be the main thing, okay? Nutrition is the main thing as you have to have some principles, you have to have some guidelines, you have to have some skin in the game, some foundation to follow. That's a major piece. And then you have to give it a chance to do its job, okay? All this stuff isn't gonna just happen overnight. It's gotta be consistency. And the people who are the most successful at this are the most consistent at this. And they've tried and, uh, the, the, they've tried and erred on several different things they've experimented and they found out what works best for them. So to be consistent, it doesn't matter what your friend did, what your mom did, what the lady did at the gym, what you saw on TV, it matters what you can do and what you can do consistently. That's the best plan for you. Trial and error, find it out. It might take six months to go through some of these things because one week is not enough time. Two weeks is not enough time. I don't think three weeks is enough time, but it's getting closer. Three weeks is close. Three weeks is close usually, okay? So be consistent. Give things some time. You didn't get this out of shape and this fat, if you will, because you did it in one week, because you did it in two weeks, because you did it in three weeks. So why the hell would you expect to get all that fat come off in that amount of time and keep it off? That's the big thing behind this. You can really tell I'm motivated about this, and this is why I was so excited to talk about this today. But that's the truth, guys. It's the God's honest truth. Okay? It didn't happen overnight. You let this happen for years and years and years. It doesn't mean it's going to take years and years and years to get it all off. But you need to be smart about this. You need to have correct expectations and attainable goals. All right? Let's move on to number three. You're not working hard enough. You're not working hard enough. But Jordan, I go to the gym like, you know, two or three or four or five or 20 days a week. I work. I work hard. Well, remember what I told you earlier about when you work more, you, you, you eat more. If you go way above that, it doesn't matter, right? We're, we're too low again, okay? When I say you're not working hard enough, that's a couple different things, but I, 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 I really just wanna dial in to the exercise part of it and the non-exercise part of it, okay? We burn way more calories per day by all the stuff that we do 
that's not exercise based. All the stuff that you do outside of the gym that is not actual exercise. Each and every day your body burns, burns way more calories than, than that than by any amount of exercise that you can do that day. Okay, It's called non-exercise activity thermogenesis. N-E-A-T. NEAT. We did an entire episode off of the podcast like um, maybe a year ago, maybe not even, that we called NEAT. Um, and, and you burn... I think it's like, I don't know, 30 or 40 percent of your daily calories that you burn come from that. Like, there's very minimal calories that actually come from exercise that you burn per day, guys. Sorry to bust your bubble. Uh, and you have to work hard, and, and, and most of us don't have two, three, four hours in a day to do that, nor is it consistent for long term stuff. I'm going to keep coming back to that because you guys don't understand that, okay? Don't do stuff that's not sustainable, not consistent. You can do it for a quick thing to make some fill some gaps here and there, but why would you think that that's the way things are supposed to be so that if you can't do those, then you're a failure, okay? It's that all or none mindset, which almost made my top five list, by the way. All or none mindset almost made my top five list. Um, gosh, it probably should have been now that I'm thinking about it, looking at my number, my next two. Um, anyway, you're not working hard enough. So getting those extra steps in does matter, but we need way more, okay? We need way more than what we think we do uh, for fat loss purposes, okay? When your body learns how to burn fat and utilize other energy storages and you learn how to keep your nutrition consistent and to make this stuff sustainable and you get a good exercise routine involved, particularly with strength training, at least two or three days a week, I'm gonna sneeze, your body will then learn how to maintain your body type and it'll, it'll leave the fat off, okay? But there's things that happen between that that make that work, okay? So, you're not working hard enough, you're not focusing on all those things that you can do outside of the gym, you're sitting on your butt too much, okay? You're not standing, you don't have a stand-up desk, you're not parking further away from the grocery store, uh, you're not getting, uh, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, you're, you're just not moving quite enough outside of the gym. But that also brings us back to the gym, you're not working hard enough in the right way. Not everything has to be a maximal all-out effort at the gym, nor should it be, okay? That doesn't mean that you should lollygag either, okay? But you have to find that proper balance because there's certain adaptations, there's certain ways our body uses energy that promotes certain things, okay? There's, there's four different energy sources, I think, in the body, if I remember quickly. Um, but we, you're not working hard enough at it. You're, you're thinking that everything that you're doing is hard work, but you're not actually tapped into your potential, right? Your glass ceiling's way too low, all right? You need to work harder at some of these things. You maybe, maybe you're the person that comes in late to your class all the time. And let's say you do that, I don't know, you come five minutes late for a month, right? Five minutes late for a month and you go to the gym five days a week. That's 25 minutes a week that adds up to 50 minutes every two weeks, that adds up to 100 minutes of exercise that you missed because you're late or you have to sneak out of your finisher early. You have to leave your gym early. You have to leave your class early. That's five minutes a week, right? Five minutes of class, you do that five times a week, that's another That's another thing. That you're missing out almost on two hours of exercise that month because you gotta quickly rush through this stuff, okay? You're not working hard enough on your rest breaks and I know that uh, can be kind of funny, but our body isn't meant to go through the survival mode at all times. Rest breaks are magic. Rest breaks are when magic happens. Recovery is how magic is made in the fat loss and performance-based efforts for strength building as well. We shouldn't be grinding all the time. Um, and if you are, it's short bouts, okay? But you're just simply not working hard enough. You're not working hard enough on nutrition. You're not working hard enough on exercise. You're not working hard enough on getting your water in. You're not working hard enough on down-regulating and de-stressing. You're not working hard enough on maintaining and being consistent. You're just not working hard enough. And uh, I, I, maybe it, maybe you're not working smart enough is a better way to say this one, right? You're, you're, you're working too hard on the things that don't matter, and uh, you're, you're focusing on the, on the minors when we need to look at the majors, okay? And, uh, and that's where we really want to wanna focus our tabs. You're just not working hard enough, right? T take your body to that next level. Number four, top five reasons you haven't burn, you aren't burning fat, your body isn't burning fat. Number four is you're relying on false information, like maybe eating five calories a day, or 500, or maybe 900 if you're lucky. Uh, you're relying on false information, 
and this information could be something that you just simply told yourself would work. You, we're, we're very good justifiers. Our mind will literally bend the truth if we tell ourselves uh, things long enough. And it'll make us think that what we're doing is supposed to work because this is how it worked before. This is how I think it's supposed to happen. But your, your mind will say it. Your mind will literally tell you that. It'll bend the truth. And again, if you do this for a long enough time, what is, what is the truth anymore, right? What The body will achieve what the mind perceives. So what we need to kind of look into this then is you're relying on false information. Maybe it's information that you heard from, I don't know, I mean, you could look up fat loss on Google and, and we can go spend 2,000 pages worth of stuff to go look at. But everyone's going to tell you something a little bit different, but also a little bit the same. And now you don't know what's true anymore. Um, but the science behind fat loss is there. I just went over that in topic number one today. Okay, So you're relying on false information. You're relying on a false claim. You're relying on, a, on you'll lose this in this amount of time. You're, you, you told yourself that you, this would happen if you do this. Right? False information can come from a lot of different things. All right? But you're relying too much on that. You're not relying on the science. You're not relying on being open. There's a, there's a mindset there that we have to get to. There's a growth mindset and a scarcity mindset. Uh, look them up. We actually did a whole podcast on that one time too, way back in the day. Um, but um, the scarce mindset will lead you to a trap. And you'll think that you don't deserve to lose fat. You're not good enough to lose fat. Um, uh, you'll, you'll start talking down to yourself when the growth mindset will be totally different you'll look for opportunities you'll look for ways to grow and burn fat you'll be proud of other people reading reaching accomplishments next to you uh, you'll acknowledge and, and, and say uh, kind of sorry to yourself but you will get over the judgment part of it and uh, you'll, you'll become kind of one if you will but you're relying on false information that's reason number four you, you you're, you're doing something that actually doesn't do like it's not working right um, number five your recovery sucks. And what I mean by recovery is the same thing I said earlier. Most fat loss happens outside of the gym. Okay? It does not happen in the gym. When you're in the gym, you break down your body. You, you literally stress it out. Okay? So if my body is now stressed out when I go to the gym for an hour, which is supposed to actually de-stress me, which should happen if the, if the right endorphins and dopamine and all that other stuff is released, hormones, neurotransmitters, right? I should feel much better about myself. I should be the best I felt all day. I should be ready to tackle things. But let's say I came from a day where I was really stressed about my job, where I didn't sleep well. And maybe that's like the third time that happened this week. And, you know, maybe something's going on with my family. Maybe I had a fight with my significant other. Maybe my kids are bugging me. Um, maybe I'm stressed about being stressed. Maybe I'm stressed about not losing fat. Maybe I'm stressed that, you know, I don't know, COVID-19 is happening. Um, you're stressed. Right, When your body is that worn out and that deprived, and we're going through that same scenario where I said earlier, whoops, I did it this way, I did it this way. You're, you're, go, you're running an empty, but your mommy syndrome's kicking in, your daddy syndrome's kicking in, and you're just depriving yourself of all the stuff. Your body doesn't know what else to do besides just trudge forward because the mind and the nervous system is telling it that. It's called the sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system is also known as the stress uh, fight or flight fight or flight nervous system, right? So you're going to fight, you're going to flight. You're going to fight or you're going to flee, okay? It's survival. Your body's on survival. There's ways to get you out of this state. Exercise can certainly help, but learning how to downregulate and learning how to recover better and sleep better works with this, okay? It's not just about the seven or nine hours of sleep that you get anymore. It's about the quality that you're getting within that. I slept for six hours and 21 minutes the other night and I had 94% recovery according to my WHOOP, which tracks that through the time that you slept and the quality of your sleep by um, your, your brain waves and your heart rate through the brain waves and your heart rate variability. There's a lot, there's an algorithm that's built around me that told me that, okay? That's off six hours of sleep, I got a 94% recovery. Last night I got about eight hours and I'm sitting at a 97% recovery today, right? So that's based off of my previous 30-day algorithm. That's my thing. That's not you. That's me. Okay. Now, with that being said, my recovery was really good. I spent some time. I can look in my sleep and, and, and look and see that I've spent some time in. Um, I was awake for in nine. I was I was I was laying in my bed for nine hours and 16 minutes. I was disturbed 16 times, which was way above my average. 
Um, hours of total sleep in that nine hours and 16 minutes were there was eight hours and 34 minutes. Uh, I slept in today and I went to bed really early last night. Um, I had about two hours of deep sleep, which was way over my average. And I had about two hours and 45 minutes in REM sleep. And I had three hours and 45 minutes in light sleep. And a lot of that light sleep happened, uh, earlier this morning cause I slept about an hour and a half past my normal bedtime. So like the last hour and a half of me being, uh, awake or me being asleep was like super light sleeping um the first two hours three hours three and a half hours was where i got most of my deep sleep which is good okay so i know those type of things my body's physically been restored but i also spent some time in that fat burning area because i got so good quality of sleep i had a 97 percent okay like that's that's high quality stuff happening there so it's not just about seven to nine hours um it's it's about how you're sleeping if you're not sleeping well we got to get that figured out because that's where your that's where your restoration is. More importantly, that's when your body can actually recover and restore itself and get back to a point where it doesn't feel like it's just deprived and in this fight or flight state all the damn time. You have to learn how to downregulate your body. I talked about this last week. You have to learn how to try to manage your stress. And there's a lot going on this year. There's no question, right? We're in this stressful time. But here's the problem. When you're stressed and when you're in that fight or flight, I told you earlier, your body goes into that survival mode. And it doesn't want to burn fat. It won't. It knows how much fat energy is. So it's going to save that for when it absolutely needs it most because you're treating your body like absolute crap. So why would your body want to do anything else if you're treating it like crap? Okay. So you're not, you're, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not recovering enough. You're not working on your actual self. You're trying to bury yourself into the ground and that's never worked well for anybody. Okay. You're being dumb about it. You're working. You're working too hard on the bad things, right? Your minors and not the good things. So uh, you're not working hard enough on your recovery and on your sleep and getting that down regulation. So you need to focus more on meditation and, and more specifically deep breathing. Sometimes meditation is an easier way for people to get there. Sometimes journaling or doing a gratitude journal is a way to get there. Um, getting massages, going to spas, taking a nice long hot bath, hot shower, something like that that you can get undistracted right be indistractable you can't be so much like that you also can't also just be in your own head either um, and, and telling yourself bad things because um, we're our own worst critics right so when it comes down to uh, you're not sleeping enough or more importantly you're not recovering enough you have to teach your body how to down regulate and this is going to be different for everybody and you have to figure out those things that take your mind off of everything else so that your body can get to that point of the parasympathetic state. So we have sympathetic, that means fight or flight. We're looking for parasympathetic, which is rest and digest. Rest and digest. And what have I always talked about since minute one of this podcast, now we're on minute 43, that most of your fat loss actually happens outside of exercise. But if your body thinks that it's in this some sort of survival state or fight or flight state, it doesn't ever get a chance to get to that other state to lose fat. So then you get annoyed, you get frustrated, you get pissed off and you start working even harder. And you start eating less because that's the way you think that things are supposed to go. But I already talked to you about fat loss science. That was all number topic number one. So now you know that that was a bad mistake. But you'll do it anyway, or you have been. And now we're in a further sympathetic state and your body will literally change into this. People who are super sympathetic state, they'll, they'll get into this like super um, extended posture. Their spine will be really curved and they'll be super extended. Their ribs will flare. These are all things that they'll be super tight up here, right? Their chest, their shoulders, their neck, they'll have headaches. They'll be super tight. Their posture will be like this. This is a sympathetic based person, okay? This is a real thing, guys. This is 100% real. But when you're in that state, you do not burn fat. When stress is high, when cortisol, another hormone in the body, is constantly there and it's constantly high and you're not going through proper cortisol levels when you're going to sleep or when you're going through this rest and digest states, fat loss basically goes down to a minimum. There's some people out there that can get fat loss from this, depending on their body type, their history, genetic stuff, weird stuff that happens through it all, but very, 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 very few people will. And here's the other thing. When that stress is like that and those people are like that, they become unbelievably weak physically, physically weak. Bones can break easy. Their tendons and ligaments aren't working well. They're, they're not strong. Um, they're deprived of energy. They probably don't feel great. Um, stress is a good hormone. It's, 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 it's in the body for a reason, but we abuse it so, 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 so much. 
So top five, five of the of the top five is that you 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 didn't uh, you aren't practicing down regulation enough. You aren't working on your recovery enough. That also includes nutrition. Okay, that also includes nutrition. But there's magic. There's great magic into uh, the recovery process. That's where all of your results happen. There's there's magic in the training that creates the adaptation that is then your fat loss. Okay, strength training is how we preserve muscle tissue by breaking it down and having that recovery process to build stronger muscle tissue or more lean muscle mass. And it's how we then create and maintain that muscle mass over a certain period of time so that your body can burn fat and then your body's metabolism over time increases because you've gained more lean muscle mass. For every pound of muscle that you gain, you burn about 50 more calories a day. So if you gain 10 pounds of muscle in a year, okay, that's a whole year, that's roughly 500 more calories that your body's burning per day, okay? That's every day, okay? That's every day. That's 3,500 a week. That's 14,000 extra calories that it's burning that month for you because you built another pound of muscle. We're giving your body enough nourishment through protein intake, to just enough to make sure that you're not wicking away muscle tissue because we don't want to lose it. And the more you can preserve that, the better your metabolism will go as the, bat fur as the fat burns, Okay? And then the adaptation and the recovery process is what the result ends up being is fat loss and muscle gain, lean muscle gain. You're not going to get big and bulky and all that crazy stuff. Um, some people can bulk up a little bit easier, but they just get a little bit more thick. And a lot of times when that happens, um, it's because they're building muscle. Remember I talked about that meter earlier. You're either in that fat burning or that fat storing. When we're in fat storing, that's also a very nice time to also build muscle. So we can also say muscle where am I at here? Yeah, muscle building, not muscle building, okay? Not necessarily muscle burning, but it's more possible for muscle burning over here, especially as we dial that thing away. Muscle building, this is also fat storing. Fat burning, not muscle building. So you wanna have the ability to make your body go in and out by the way that you exercise. It has to be strength training involved with this and the way that you're eating and then giving your body proper recovery times. If you just drain your body down and you beat your body down, like recovery from strength training guys can take up to three days, okay? So if you're just gonna continue to attack those muscles and they're not gonna get a chance to recover, A, it's gonna result in injury, a uh, much more likelihood of injury, your performance will massively drop, and your fat loss will, will not be there because your body's in that fight or flight state again, okay? So there's magic, there's balance, there's extreme power to all of this, but it's, there's science as well. I'm talking about the science, okay? These are the top five reasons. Number one, you don't understand how fat loss works. We spent 23 minutes on that topic alone and I just touched on it again right there in the review. Number two is your nutrition's not consistent. You are not consistent with nutrition, whether it's a plan that you're following or just in general, you're just not consistent. Uh, number three, you're not working hard enough. You're, you're, you're not doing the right things in the gym. If you're burying yourself in the gym, you're you're uh, you're not working smart enough is 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 the is the way I should have said that okay I have hard written down but it's, you're not working smart enough you're burying yourself you're not doing the right things you're not spending enough time in the gym you're trying to get out of the gym you're showing up late leaving early you're not resting uh, you're not working smart enough uh, you're relying on false information you 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 fell for a gimmick you fell for a quick fix and you thought that's the way that your life was supposed to be it's not. Uh, or you told yourself a lie that you end up now believing in because we'll believe what we tell ourselves long enough. And you're not recovering enough. You're not sleeping enough. You're not working on your nutrition enough. You're not down-regulating enough. You're not treating your body uh, well. Uh, you're taking advantage of it. You're pushing it to its limits without worrying about the other side of it. Um, if your workout training and intensity increase, guys, recovery and adaptation uh, focus has to also increase. Okay, We can't just go ball out all the time and not worry that there's gonna be any repercussions. Everything will work until it doesn't. And when it doesn't, it's gonna be way too late because then you're gonna be like, oh, hindsight's 2020, but it's way, way past that, okay? I'm gonna give you one more tip. I'm gonna give you one more tip. Bonus. Top six reasons why you aren't burning fat, why your body isn't burning fat, is that you're not getting guidance and you're not tracking that with proper expertise. Okay, so it's a double whammy there. You're not being guided nor tracking anything with expertise at your side. That means you're not hiring a coach. 
you read too much into this, you fell for too much of the fat loss gimmicks, you fell too much for the quick fixes, you didn't believe in yourself long enough, you're too damn busy, you have to learn how to do what works for you. And it does not mean that you work out six days a week. Guys, We the best results we get at Unity Fitness are the people that do four days a week. Maybe even three. It's three to four. Okay, 3.5. We'll say 3.5 days a week. Those are the people who get the best results here. Not the people who come in more than four, five to six. Not We don't allow two-a-days. So good luck with that. That's just dumb. Okay, Pro athletes can barely maintain that. And they get fed the right way. Okay, They're nourishing the right way. They get treated the right way. They have... They have a whole recovery team of PTs and athletic trainers and a whole recovery room. Okay, You're not a professional athlete. You're not an Olympian. You can't do that. And it's great programming. It's very great programming because they can work on certain movements or muscle groups, if you will, patterns that don't interact and affect each other. But again, their nutrition's good. Their sleep's good. Um, but uh, going back to this... Uh, the top people here get three to four days a week. That's who get the best results because they're giving themselves time to recover and they're enjoying that. They're, they're, they're not training intensively every day. They can get some movement in. They can get 30 minutes of a nice leisure bike ride, some cardio, some core work, some mobility work, some yoga work, some stuff like that. It's not that hard. They don't have to drain themselves like that, but that's the best people, the people that we see three to four days a week. Uh, but that bonus tip is that you're, you're, you're not being guided. You don't have expertise guiding you. You're going from this to that to this to that, which is good to an extent because we love experimentation. We want to know what works best for you, but we also have to know what works best for you. We have to figure out what's going on with your lifestyle. What have you done in the past? What are you doing right now? What is your body like right now? Where are we at? What's your blood work look like if we need to look at that type of stuff? We need to consider that sometimes. But you didn't have expert guidance, and you're not tracking anything. You, you just lit it all up to chance, right? Or you're doing random stuff all the time, which random stuff is going to get you random results. There's no way around it, okay? Random stuff will get you random results. Uh, so we know there's a plan out there for fat loss. We do it here, okay? Uh, the easy thing about what we do is we get people coming to the gym. It's the first time I've heard this from numerous members. It's the first time they've ever been at a gym, and, and, and they, you've seen it in our reviews, right? Um, and then they've ever stuck to a gym. We make that the easy part so that we can focus on the hard part, which is all the stuff that happens outside of the gym. Come to the gym three days a week, there's still 165 hours to take care of, guys. That's what we as coaches and as your experts want to focus on now. So that's tip number six. You have not hired the expert yet. Okay? But you got to go through a lot of these stages. We all have to get burned a little bit. You have to trust the expert. You have to trust the plan. We know how fat loss works. It's a little bit different based on lifestyles and everything else for everybody. Their age can come into play. A little tiny, very little bit of genetics, but I'm not going to give that any type of power to in this. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that we can tackle. But the top five reasons are what I've seen the most and what I believe in the most of why your body's not burning fat anymore. But go back and review them, especially number one. There's science behind this. We know the science. When we get that science down, fat loss will happen. Okay? And number six, experts. We're right here on fitness, on exercise, and in nutrition. We're sitting here talking. Okay, we're doing this. This is what we do. We're not doing this because we're a hobby. We're doing this because we want to serve people. We want to better our community. We want to better the world. We want to better you because we want you to live your life at your best because that's what we're here to do. That's what we're here to serve. So if you need more expert guidance, and let's say you're a member at Unity Fitness in some way, shape, or form for remote coaching or not, you need to talk to us right away. You need to message us and be like, hey, I just listened to this podcast. Holy shit. Let's rock and roll. Let's go. When can we talk? And I don't care if it's the holidays, okay? We're still working next week. We're working on Christmas Eve. We're here. We're open until like 1, I think, okay? Um, tackle it now when it's the most stressful time of year and everything else is going to be that much easier, in my mind. So let us know that you listen to this and let's get rocking and rolling. How can we make this better? Number two, if you're not a member at Unity Fitness and you want to do number six, also, let us know. Just send us a message. Say like, "Wow, I just lost. I just watched your podcast. Just listen to your podcast, and this is this is nuts." Uh, send us a message on Facebook. Email us at unityfitnesslacrosse at gmail dot com. Um, comment, whatever you want to do. But this is big stuff, and we are here because we know it's big stuff, and we're also here because we know that there's so much other garbage and crap out there that's ruining and crushing our society, that's making our job even harder to do because you fell for another great marketing tactic or gimmick. And we're here to be real with you. 
We're here to educate you. We're here to inspire you so that you can get to the best version of you that you want to be and have your best years be ahead of you. That's 110% our mission. That's what we're able to do uh, as being open right now through COVID-19. That's what our members are loving us for. And the other part, guys, just, I mean, we're good at what we do. Uh, we, we embrace your trust. We appreciate your trust. Uh, we're looking to build back up. We, we obviously took a drastic hit during COVID-19. Uh, we're in rebuild mode. And, and uh, I, I kind of look at it more as like a reload mode, but we never really lost who we were. Um, but we're not just doing this for fun. Like we love what we do because we get to change your lives and we get to change our community. We get to change our world. And we love seeing how what we can do in a gym can help you live your best life in any facet. And it also is a great thing for uh, your overall health, both physical and mental. So if you're not a member of Unity Fitness and you're ready to just take that next step with the experts, the best in the business, the number one gym as voted on by other business owners and gym owners in the world, that's us. Send us a message, comment, all that stuff, and let's get rocking and rolling because 2021 is going to be much better than 2020. Has to be. It's only one, only one answer. Okay. With that said, that's episode number 112 of the Community Fitness Podcast, guys. Thank you so much for listening along. I'm almost at a full hour. I haven't done this long of a podcast in a really long time. Um, I'm probably just going to take part of this in the future and just say the science of fat loss and just cut out that topic number one. Um, because it was so good. And obviously, I'm very passionate about talking about this. I wouldn't be in business for nine years as a personal trainer, fitness coach, or now five and a half years as a business if we uh, weren't good at what we did or if we didn't know about fat loss. And here we are. So uh, the average trainer lasts 18 months in the industry, 16 months now. So we've, uh, we've obviously gone a little bit above that um, by... Oh, I don't know, 10 times that long, that, 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 that length from being in business here. So let us know. But that's all for the Community Fitness Podcast episode number 112 in the top five, actually top six reasons why your body isn't burning fat. Questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comments below here um, and let us know what you think. Let us know what you want us to talk about next or let us know how we can help. Get a hold of us. If you're a member at Unity Fitness, let's talk. If, uh, if you're not, let's talk and get you to be one. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Back and better than ever. We have a super special episode next week on Christmas Eve, a surprise guest. Uh, so much of a surprise that I'm not even going to tell you who it is. Um, but it's, it's going to be an unbelievable episode that we're going to talk about goal setting and determination and motivation and all these other things. And all you, all you the only tease you get is that he's a rocker. He's a musician and he's a rocker. And he's a hell of a rocker at that. You know who he is, but you'll know him better next week. All right, guys, we'll talk then. Be well, be safe, be happy, be responsible. Till then, Jordan Rudolph, Community Fitness Podcast, owner and founder, and we'll see you back next week, back and better than ever for episode 113.